Hey guys, welcome. In this video, we're going to create a 2D decal system from scratch. It is extremely efficient because they are all drawn on one draw call. There's no second camera required. They don't even have the overhead of a game object because we're going to draw them directly to our color buffer from a custom renderer feature. And if you've never coded a renderer feature from scratch before, neither had I before this video, so I will explain what I've learned as we go through it. Ready? Let's go. So we only require two scripts for this entire system, one of which is our renderer feature. So you can actually go to create renderer URP renderer feature. This is just going to have a lot of the boilerplate stuff already done for you. Let's call that decal renderer feature. And the second script, which is the one we're going to write to first, is just a regular mono behavior script, and we will call that decal manager. So while we're at it, we'll create a decal manager game object and attach that script and open it up. Now, just to make this easier to reference later from our renderer feature, I'm going to make this a singleton. And this is a pretty small script, so we're only gonna need a few variables. We'll set a maximum number of them. This can be quite high without causing any problems. A replacement distance, which is optional. I'm just putting this in here so that I don't wind up with too many bullet holes too close together. So if the new bullet hole is closer than this distance here, what we'll do is we'll delete the old one and spawn in a new one, which in my testing just looked a lot nicer. And again, optional, I'm going to set up a layer mask as well. And we're going for efficiency and speed here, and structs are extremely efficient, so we'll set one up that holds our position, rotation, and size. And finally, a list of our active decals. And we can hide that in the inspector because I need to be able to access it from the renderer feature, but I don't need to assign anything to it or even see it in the inspector, but I do need it public. So in Awake, we can go ahead and set the list to our maximum capacity. And we only need one method in this whole script here, and it's gonna be called add decal. And we'll pass in our position, size, and layer mask. So the only reason that I passed in the layer mask in the first place is so I could do an overlap point check on the center of the decal. And if that overlap point doesn't hit anything, then we'll just cancel out of this method. This is just to prevent the occasional bullet hole that wound up floating in midair in some of my tests. You may or may not need this depending on your project and your needs. Now I'm going to iterate through our active decals, but backwards, which is the most efficient and effective way to remove an item from a list while we're iterating through it. And for a cheaper distance check, we'll say if our active decals position minus the position we pass in, if that square magnitude is less than our replacement distance squared, then remove that decal. Now, we also want to remove a decal if our current count is greater than our maximum amount. All right, and finally, now that we've done all that, we create the new decal data, passing in a position. I'd like a random rotation, which I will do like this. And you can see we're passing in our size as well. And finally, you can add that new data to our list of active decals. And that's it for this script. I'm just gonna change this to my ground layer. And now we can open up our decal renderer feature. Now, as of the time that I'm recording this, the render graph API is relatively new, so they are still including some methods for legacy purposes. So these will eventually be deprecated. And I wanna use the new API so we can remove all of these. Now, you will notice there is a nested class here called custom render pass. Let's go ahead and rename that. You can click on it and press control RR to rename it. And we'll call it decal render pass. Now this is where we actually write the instructions and the logic for what to draw and how to draw it. And I'd like to start a little more from the beginning first, so let's just minimize this class for now. I also don't like this naming convention or its name, so let's rename that to decal pass. All right, now we have a create method here, which runs once when the renderer feature is first enabled. So this doesn't sit on a game object, so we have to create a new instance of it. And here we're telling the rendering system when to draw whatever we put in our pass up here. Now, first off, we're going to need to set it to render before transparency, but I still do prefer to be able to choose myself in the inspector. So to do that, we'll create a, another little nested class here, and we need to make it serializable so it actually does show up in the inspector since it's a class. And in total, there are three things we're going to want to set in the inspector, so we'll put them all here. The material, 
the mesh and when to render it. And now right here, we'll create a public settings. And again, we need to create a new instance of that decal settings class. Now in the create method, let's get rid of this line because we're gonna create a setup method for that inside of the decal render pass script. It'll take in a decal settings and we'll make our decal settings in this class be equal to the one that we pass in. And then set the render pass event equal to the one in the settings. And we can go ahead and minimize this class again. Okay, now add render passes is where we actually inject decal render pass into the renderer and it's already queuing up the decal pass here. And this method runs once per frame per camera. And we want this line here to be last. So up here, let's add a safety check or two. First, we're going to just return out if we don't have a material or a mesh set from our settings, because if we don't, then it's not gonna work anyways. Also, this one is optional, but if you don't want your scene camera to be included, then you can also return as well. So it only runs in the game view, but that is totally your choice. Then we need to actually call the setup method that we just made and pass in our settings. And then this line here is already good, which adds our custom pass to the queue of passes that the render graph is going to draw this frame. All right, now this part is optional again, but if you want to make this easier to find in your profiler, let's open up our decal render pass class and create a new profiling sampler. Now to fill that in, we're creating a new instance of decal render pass down here in create, which means if we create a constructor up here, and pass in a string. We pass in that string to our profiling sampler. Then down here, we can just put in 2D decal pass or something like that. All right, we're actually pretty close. So in order to actually draw the decals, our renderer is going to need a few pieces of information. And we can fill that in in the pass data class, which was already provided for us. You can see this class simply stores data that's needed by the render graph pass, and it's passed as a parameter to the delegate function that executes the render graph pass, which you can see here. So we want to add what material should it be drawn with? What mesh should that material be applied to? And then it also needs to know the position, rotation, and scale of the object. And we can actually do all of those in one by using a list of type matrix four by four. Okay, now we're actually at the part where we tell it how to draw the thing. And I was actually really pleased because this does handle a lot of the boilerplate stuff for you. There's not a whole lot extra we need to do. Though we can go ahead and add the optional profiling sampler here since we took the time to make one. This using loop is good, and all of our logic is gonna go inside of it. This line is good as well. That gives us access to the camera's color texture and the depth buffer, which we are going to need. This line here is also good. But at the top here, we can actually say if our decal manager is null or it doesn't have any active decals, then go ahead and skip because there's nothing to draw anyways. Now you can see down here, we're passing in the past data, so we should actually populate those now. We can pass in the decal material and mesh easily enough. And to create a new list of matrix four by fours, it's actually really easy. First, we create a new list. Then for every active decal, we can add a matrix four by four dot TRS, which just literally stands for translation, rotation, and scale. And we can pass in our position, rotation, and decal size like that. Now this line here is the most important because this is telling the renderer what to draw on. We're saying the active color texture, which is just what's on the main screen. It's the primary color buffer that displays all the colors in our game. The render features are extremely powerful and they give us a lot of options as well. There's so much you can do here. We could, for example, if we wanted, draw this to a texture instead. They even show you how to do that here. You could do that and then pass in the texture here instead, for example, to write to the texture. And then you could use that in some other way in your game. But for this example, we want to draw it to the main color buffer. Now we do need to add a line here because we also need to draw the depth buffer. And this is not to be confused with the optional depth texture, which you can toggle on or off in your UIP settings. This is different. 
And this is going to tell them what order to render in based on depth, which means that even though this is a 2D project, the Z position of our objects is going to be important to tell the renderer which order to draw them in. We need it to read from the depth buffer so that it knows what should be drawn in front of it and what it should be drawn in front of. And we need it to write as well, or apparently the decals that are close together would fight for the same position, causing them to sometimes flicker very aggressively. And actually, we can just simplify this line here to just this, which calls the execute pass method. So I'd actually prefer that this be down here. And this finally tells it what to draw. We told it where and on what layer, but here we tell it what to draw by calling the very efficient draw mesh instance, which allows us to draw our decal multiple times using GPU instancing. And we pass in the mesh, the material, and our matrices array. All right, now to finish this off, we need to create a shader, which is going to be extremely simple. Now we're drawing a mesh instance, so it can't be a sprite, so we're just going to do an unlit shader. You can set the surface type to transparent, but make sure you turn alpha clipping on. And very important, we need to change depth right to force enabled, or it's not going to write to the depth buffer and it'll just be hidden behind our walls all the time. So now we can create a texture 2D called main text, sample it, and plug in the color and the alpha. And an alpha clip threshold of 0.5 is usually pretty good. You can adjust that if you need to. So we're gonna create a material from that shader. And again, this step is very important. Make sure you enable GPU instancing on this material. And then go ahead and assign your texture in here. Now we need to actually enable the renderer feature. And we do that in our URP asset. And if you don't know where to find that, you can go to edit project settings, URP, or you can just search for it, I guess. Now in there, you'll have a renderer data. If you don't know where that is, you can click on it and then select it. And now in here is where we add our custom renderer feature. We can open up the settings and assign our material. For the mesh, we can just draw a quad. And again, make sure that it is set to before rendering transparency. Now, whenever we call our add decal method from our decal manager, it gets drawn to the screen. For me, I have this player shoot script and a lot of it is just handling the various effects and whatnot. But essentially in my update method, if enough time has passed and we're holding the mouse button, then we shoot a bullet. All that does besides the effects is it fires a ray cast, which is offset slightly just because it's a Gatling gun and I thought it looked better that way. And if we actually hit something, I hard coded a Z position of minus 0.3, which is in front of my tile map, but behind my player. With this system, we don't just have sprite level access to just sort by layer. So instead we need to position things on the Z. And then I call my add decal method, passing in the bullet point, a size and a layer mask. And just to reiterate, you will notice my player is set to a Z of minus 0.5 and my tile map is actually set to zero, which means, like I said, the bullet holes will be positioned right in between the two. Now, if you want to see your renderer feature in the render graph viewer, depending on what your Unity version is, you may need to turn compatibility mode off. You can find that in edit, project settings, graphics, render graph settings at the bottom, and you want this to be unchecked. Once you've done that and you are in play mode, you can go to window, analysis, render graph viewer, and you will see it at the top here. Mine is just labeled render custom pass. If you want to rename it, you can just change this text here inside of the record render graph method. This is a great little system and it's actually pretty easy to be able to add more than one type of decal in here. So if you want access to this full project that you're seeing here on the screen on GitHub and you wanna help support the channel, then consider supporting us over on Patreon. That's all I got guys, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one, bye.